change. God does not contradict himself. That's why even if you don't even know a scripture, just for you to know that God does not contradict himself, the fact that there is this uh, showdown that's happening between these false prophetesses, they are in contradiction within each other. You, you should just know like, okay, wait a minute, that is not of God. Because God does not contradict himself. Because if both of them are representing uh, the God of universe, right? There shouldn't be any contradiction. The fact that there's a contradiction, that tells us like, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute, which is it? Into nations, from going into families, from going into marriages. There were gatekeepers that thought that they stopped you from going into ministry, from being promoted. There were gatekeepers that thought that they stopped you. And I heard the Lord say, you're going to rush in. Can you give me a little bit more bass on my mic, please? A few things I learned about gates. And you're gonna to listen to this replay because God has given me a word of the Lord that is going to take you about three to four times to listen to it. Statistics show that you have to read a book seven times to retain 60% of the information. Which means that you cannot just watch this cover by God one time and retain everything that God has given me to say today. There is no way because of the way my brain learns that I could have gotten this by natural revelation. God had to have given it to me. So when I say, make sure you listen to this and watch it with paper and pen, because you might not be able to write everything I'm saying down right now, because I want to pray over this part really quickly. But there's a few things I learned about gates. Psalms 24 says, lift up your heads, which means that gates are supposed to respond to you. It means that a gate is supposed to do what you told it to do. It means that the head of a gate can be looking down. That means that it can't see you coming. If a gate is supposed to respond to you, it means that when you come to it, it's supposed to open up. That means that if the gate has been blinded by demonic gatekeepers, the gates have closed their eyes. That means that you have to say, lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up. He is your body, Lord, because the King of glory. We know that the word gate, there's about 123 scriptures in the Bible with the word gate. And I'm just like, Tiffany, what are you talking about over here? Okay, so that's not, whatever she just said over there has got nothing to do with Psalm 24. Okay, it, it does call out, okay, lift up all you gates, right? This is a psalm that um, uh, the, Jew, the Jewish people, the Hebrews, right? They would sing, uh, it's an ascending psalm, okay? If they are going to uh, Jerusalem, they'll be singing psalm. If they're coming down, they'll be singing psalm. And it's also, remember, uh, Christ, right, in ascension, right? So this is even talking about Jesus when he rose, like, you know, ascending, going to heaven, like, you know, lift up all you gates so the king of glory may come in. This is in reference to the Messiah. So, but according to Tiffany, you can just say, oh, lift up the gates and the gates are supposed to open which gates, Tiffany, are you talking about, okay? Because remember, the psalm, they were specific, right? Like, you know, when people are going, they, when they are going to battle, they were setting psalms that they were singing. When they are victorious, like when people are lamenting, when like it, it, there's all kinds of uh, psalms that you're going to have. This was the, you know, the Old Testament hymnal. That's why, okay, so when people are saying things, just, you know, it, 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 the scriptures according to the context, according to the context. So now she has this whole theology. She's going to bring it to us about the gates. Okay. So uh, let's uh, listen in some more. In it. Many of them have different definitions. I had three for today, but one of them is Shahar. And for those of you that don't know, I look up definitions many different ways. I use an app on my iPhone called the Blue Letter Bible app. I heard it does not translate good in the Android, but I use an app called the Blue Letter Bible app. In that app, it has a, what's called a concordance in it that allows you to look up the Hebrew and Greek definitions of the word. The reason I do that is because a lot of the English words are derivatives from a root word that means something completely different than what you know. So I like to go to the original intent of why God used that word. It helps me to be able to fight better in prayer. It helps me to be able to understand better because if, if Proverbs 29 11 says, through knowledge are the just delivered, I keep my deliverance by what I know. That means if I stay ignorant to a substituted meaning of a word, which is what the devil wants you to do, you can never retain your deliverance because if through knowledge are the just delivered, it means through your ignorance, are you still bound? How are you a part of cover by God and you never open up your Bible? The three days of fasting cannot sustain you. 
It's the Word of God that sustains you. Fasting is powerful, but it is not more powerful than the Word of God. So the word here, Sha'ar, it means an entrance, it means heaven, it means a port, it means opening. Then we go to Psalms 87 too, and the Bible says that the Lord loveth the gates of Zion, which means that God loves certain gates and he hates certain gates. Amen? Then we go to 100, Psalms 100 verse 4, where we enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving! Which means that there is a certain posture you take when you walk through a gate. Then we go to Psalms 100, 107 verse 16, also Isaiah 45 2. They say similar things, but I'm going to read out of Isaiah 45 2. Because I think that this definition of the gate is so powerful. The Bible says in verse 2, I will go before you and I'll make the crooked places straight. I looked up the word crooked places. I was, be, I was blown away that it actually meant arrogant, the proud. We often know that as a spirit of Leviathan. The spirit of Leviathan is the king of pride. It's not just a spirit of pride. It's the king of pride. We know that Leviathan is a dragon in the Bible. Job fought against this monster. When you study Job 40, like between 30, Job 45 to 42, you realize that God told Job, you can't beat Leviathan. I have to beat Leviathan. Job then told God, I repent for thinking that I was high enough to beat this dragon when I should have really bowed to you while you fought this battle for me. So he said, I'm gonna go before you because a lot of the reasons these gates have been closed is because there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a king of Leviathan, a king of pride that stopped it from you going through it. So as she continues with uh, this theology about the gates, you remember you can make the scripture to say whatever else you want to say, right? It, it's, it's going to sound good. So when the scripture says, like, okay, enter the gates with thanksgiving. Okay, so when, like, what does that mean? This is just like, okay, if you're going to the worshiping places, right, go there with a, with a heart, with a good posture of thanksgiving. So what happens when you go to a place of worship where there is no gate? Should you enter that place of worship with, with a, a thanksgiving attitude? You, you see where this thing, how you can take it? Because if the gate is not there, which means... You shouldn't do it, right? Only when the gate is there, that's when I can enter the place with thanksgiving. But if the gates are not there, then I'm exempt to enter that place with thanksgiving. Then she uh, she went on over uh, the story about this Leviathan. I don't even know what to, to make of that, right? But rem she's over here speaking with the audience and the way they're playing the music. You see what I'm saying? Like it's it just the feels, right? It gets you in the mood and all that. So... You know, very good production. I gi I'll give her that. Okay, very good production, lighting, everything, uh, perfect. Okay, everything perfect. So, but this is uh, what wh what we're getting from her. But there's more guys. So hang tight. Okay, that's somebody that deals with a spirit of pride. The king of pride is its ruler. So when he says, I'm going to go before you and I'm going to make this crooked place straight, that means whoever thought that they could cock block what God was doing. Whoever thought that they could blackball you, whoever thought they could pick up the phone and say, don't support her. He said that crooked tongue, that crooked ear, that crooked sight, that crooked place, I'm going to straighten that out for you, baby. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't even worry about it, sweetheart. He said, I'm going to go before you and I'm going to make the crooked places straight. I will break the pieces of the gates of brass. I thought the word gate here was powerful. It means crocodile jaws. It means an easily accessible woman. That is the Hebrew definition of the word gate. Crocodile jaws, an easily accessible woman, which means you men who are sleeping with these women, who are trying to figure out why your destiny is destroyed, who is trying to figure out why you're 40 and your life hasn't gotten anywhere, who is trying to figure out why you, think you, you thought you could cheat on your wife and you think that you up and up and stuck but you're really down and bound for all of y'all men who think you can put your dick in somebody and they just rock like that? I want you to know that you just entered into a gate. You just entered into crocodile jaws. And y'all women who like to be with easily accessible women. Cause a woman just isn't a woman, a woman is a system. 
So I hope you guys followed what she says, right? Just once again with a D word and she didn't even flinch an eye. And then she says, like, a, a woman is a system. Like, w w what is this? Are we, <laughs> we have a different definition of what a woman is. Guys, a get is simply a get. There isn't anything, uh, there isn't anything, you don't have to know once what a get is, okay? The way she's trying to present over here, creating a doctrine out of nothing, okay? This is just like, okay, you know, you, you live in your house, you have a door, you're going to close the door. Okay, you can say something in reference, people can understand, right? Like Jesus is saying, you know, he's a gatekeeper, okay? Um, uh, he's, you know, he's the door, right? Are we out here thinking that, okay, Jesus is actually the physical door? No, we understand what it means, right? This is an entryway, right? You're, you're, you, can help, you, know, you have to go through the door of Jesus. We get it, like, okay, so you have to go through Jesus in order for you to make it to heaven. We understand this is... Um, you know, like we use these languages all the time. We understand it's just part of, it's part of the lingo. So for her to create all this doctrine that she wants to create, okay? And then she went over there, crocodile jazz, or whatever else that she, she is saying. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> a woman is not just a woman. I get so many emails. There's a reason I be telling y'all not to email me. But I still get emails from people saying to me, women shouldn't preach. I'm like, first of all, are we in 1453? Because if you had the balls and you actually did the job up here, maybe I wouldn't have to. I could sit down there with my legs crossed, looking pretty. And they did it because they have misinterpreted. It is impossible. Listen to me. It is impossible to read the word of God without the Holy Ghost. Impossible. Anytime you read the Bible without the Spirit of God powering that, you're going to always misinterpret it. That's why he said, it's not my word like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces and it's like a fire. But guess what? A hammer can't break a walk in pieces without a person. So that's Tiffany for you guys, right? She has to do it because... Uh, Men, they don't have uh, whatever she used over there, right, to, to preach. So therefore, she's doing it. This is the problem that we have, right? Because uh, women, this is, this, this is feminism at its peak. Because you assume that men are not doing it or men cannot do it, then you want to take over and do this. Isaiah is clear. Once you have women ruling over you, children over you, you are under judgment. That is the judgment. That is a judgment. So for her to think what she's doing uh, is okay. No, it is not okay. No, it is not okay. Because she's out here even uh, denouncing the scripture that is outright clear. Okay. First Timothy 2.12. Okay. I do not permit a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. For Adam, the reason is Adam was formed first. And then it was Eve who was deceived. That's why. So she is out here operating outside the scriptures. And then she had the excuse to say, oh, no, this is nothing to do with this time around. Right. It had to do with back then. You pick. So if it had to do with back then, why are you out here, uh, you know, claiming to be yourself a prophetess? Because prophetess was back then, not now. <laughs> so this is the problem when people just don't want to stick to the scriptures. They want to pick and choose what, uh, what they want. But if the word of God says, I do not permit a woman to teach, that's it. You might want to teach. You might want to do all those things. If God says no, it's no. That's it. Okay. Women can teach. Other women can teach children according to Titus 2. So this is Tiffany trying to uh, twist the scriptures right in front of us but uh we are not going to beat the tide so let's take a look at the scripture as well okay first peter 3 verse 3 okay do not let your adorning be external the braiding of hair and putting on of god jewelry or the clothing you wear but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. For this is how the holy women 
This, the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands. As Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. And you are her children if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. So as women, we are called to be daughters of Sarah. We are to have a, a quiet and mixed spirit. What we are witnessing from Tiffany is far from that. It is far from that. The scripture is clear. Okay. You are operating outside the scripture and you are excusing it, saying it was back then. Like, no, 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 no. It's the same scripture then and now and forevermore because it is the word of God. So this woman, no. Fire can't be lit without the help of a person. That person is the Holy Ghost. So unless you read the Bible with the help of the Holy Ghost, you're always going to get it wrong. What he was talking about is back in that day, just to clarify something for y'all. The women sat over here and the men sat over here. And when they didn't understand what was being said, they would scream over to their husbands. And they would say, what did the pastor say? So he told them to be quiet. Amen. Well, how do I know this? I know this because the Holy Ghost. But I also know it because one of Paul's teachers was, who was it? Aquila and Priscilla. It was a husband and wife team. And if you ever read the Bible, you'll notice a lot of the time they put the wife's name before they put the husband's name. Which means Guys, I thought I heard that correctly. She said that uh, Priscilla and Aquila were Paul's teachers. That is not true. You're not going to find that in scripture. Priscilla and Akira did ministry with Paul. That's, um, that's definitely true. They, they are actually missionaries. They were not just like in one place. They taught Apollos the correct way, but not Paul. Paul already knew what was going on. They did ministry together. So maybe she misspoke. She, was, she meant to say Apollos. She ended up saying Paul. So... I, I can give a grace on that, but just to clarify, Paul was uh, Aquila and um, Priscilla and Aquila were not teachers of Paul. They did help in Paul's ministry. They helped Apollos the correct way. Back to what she said to say that uh, when Paul told women to be quiet, it's because they were in the church. And they were making noise, asking their husband. And Paul told them, that's, no, 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 that's not what the text is. That is absolutely not true. That is actually false. The word there that is using that I do not permit a woman to teach is uh, to speak. They should remain quiet. It's not saying that women, like when you go to church, you're going to sing. You're talking. But they're saying that they are not the ones, they are not the ones speaking. Okay? It's like you, when you go to a conference, if I ask you, who was the speaker? You, you're just going to mention the name of so-so-so was the speaker. We know what that means, right? It means that that, that was a person who was teaching, okay? So what she said there, absolutely not correct. Paul has already given the reason as to why women are not supposed to be uh, teaching and exercising authority over men. She's giving her reasons based upon creation. And she went back to Genesis. This was even before Paul existed. This was before there was... Uh, Athens and all these other civilization. Okay. So that is rooted in creation. Male headship is rooted in creation. And that was already there before the fall. That's why Adam was created first before Eve. That's why Adam is the one who was given in charge of everything that was going on long before Eve came on the scene. That's why men are the head of their household. So do you think that it's so you can have a man who is the head of a household at home, but Christ is just going to leave the church without a structure, without order? Absolutely not. So this has to do with headship. Every time you have women who have taken over within the society, within the churches, is feminism. That's the, this is the this is the curse that we got from Eve. Your desire will be what he, to usurp the readership of your husband. You know. So there, no, she twisted the scripture. It is uh, that's not uh, what it meant. But let's finish. It. More of a prominent teaching position in his life than her husband did. 
You'll also notice that the same man that said women shouldn't talk in the church was also the same man in the Bible that had a list of women that he thunk in ministry for being ministers of the gospel. You should look at it. Those names will, you'll be like, I didn't even know these people was in here. In order. I say that to say that women are not just women. Y'all are more powerful than you think you are. The devil hates the moment you discover it. But women are systems. And what he's letting us know here is that women are gates. That men should watch what they put inside of it. Psalms 107 verse 18, he says, draw near to the gate of death. They draw near to the gate of death, which means that- No guys, I see some men there. I see some men, there were some men in the back over there. One is wearing uh, a blue shirt. So even there, what she said, I was just like, what are you doing? Okay, you're just using vulgar language and necessarily there, it, it does not even uh, make any sense. So no, if you look at the scripture, I'm sure she might be referencing to, uh, that is uh, the either Romans 17 or Romans 16, where Paul has a list of uh, people he is thanking uh, in terms of the ministry, right? You did, there were women who did sponsor uh, Paul's ministry, right? You have Phoebe, you have uh, in uh, Sintiki, you know, Paul is saying like, you know, Sintiki, I forgot the other, the other lady's name. But these were not uh, apostles. These were not prophetesses. These were women who were involved in the church. Like women can serve in the church, but they were not the elders of the church. They were not teaching uh, men in the church. Even the situation of Priscilla and Akira, that was a private situation that happened at home. It wasn't during the, when the church was gathered in an assembly. So this is the text that people are going to use to excuse, to soothe their conscience so they can be able to preach and teach to men at the expense of uh, what the Bible teaches. So no, what she's saying does not match the scripture in any way, shape or form. So we, uh, we reject that, okay? Titus 2, right here, clear. Verse 3. Other women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good and to train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husband, that the word of God may not be reviled. So we have demonstrated beyond the shadow of doubt that Tiffany Montgomery, prophetess, has reviled the word of God over and over and over again. So we call Tiffany to repent us. What are you? Because gates have to respond to you. You can declare that gate closed in the name of Jesus Christ and it has to obey you. Psalms 147 verse 13. Can you lift up my mic again? And leave it up. Thank you. Psalms 147 verse 13. The Bible says he has strengthened the bars of your gates, which means that your gates can be strong or weak. Proverbs 31, 23, her husband is known at the gates, which means that your husband has access to portals, access to openings, access, and you should be praying him through, woman of God. Isaiah 60, verse 18, thou shalt call your wall salvation and your gates praise. Matthew 16, 18, and the gates of hell, that means that there is a gate of hell that is always trying to come against your life. But upon this rock, he has built his church. And the gates of hell cannot, be, that's why you wanna be careful. I know, I know all about church hurt. But you wanna be careful not to identify an institution for what, what one man did. You wanna be careful not to keep saying, I don't like men, I'm never getting married because of what one man you wasn't supposed to be with no way did. You want to be careful because the, gate, the church is the only thing that the gates of hell can't prevail against. So be careful against coming against something that God stands for. Acts 9. Now, did you hear what she just said over here, right? She went to Proverbs, uh, uh, Proverbs 31. That scripture when he's saying, okay, you know, uh, her husband is not in the gates. Remember, during that time, where the gates, this is where they were handling business, okay? Like, you know, you have cases to be handled. You have, uh, you know, uh, commas is happening. This was, I don't know, like maybe like a city council, so to speak. 
So it's known as at the gates. You see what I'm saying? So the husband was well known at the gates, right? So like, you know, you go to that place, everybody knew this man had a woman who knew how to handle business at home. That's all. There's, there's nothing, whatever. And when Jesus is saying, like, you know, establishing his church, right? Upon this rock, I establish my church and the gates of hell are not going to prevail. What does that mean? In the ancient times, remember all these cities, right? They were inside the wall. They'll build the wall around the cities and they will have gates, which was an entry point to come out and to go in. So you had people, uh, you had the security places, or, you know, placed upon the gates. So when the other nations want to breach in, what would they do? They had to breach the gates in order for them to enter, uh, in, to enter the city and to destroy the city. Okay, so the gate was a very much fortified place because this was where an enemy is going to attack. So when Jesus is saying the gates of hell are not going to prevail, right? Because we have the gospel of Christ. We can go anywhere and enter any other place. Even as much as those hell gates that are fortified, they are not going to prevail because we have the gospel, we'll be able to bring down strongholds, right? Because the weapons of our warfare have divine power, right? This is not, we, you know, we, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So that's what it's referring to, right? This is the spiritual warfare that's taking place. So for her to manipulate all that and to bring it like, okay, a woman is a gate. Where does it say in the scripture that a woman is a gate? <laughs> Oh, my goodness, man. Uh, like, this is bad. Okay? This is bad. That's all. That's all it means. Okay? So, the same way right now, like, you go to, uh, e even even today, people still use the gates, right? If somebody wants to go to the White House, what, what are you going to do? You have to approach the gate, right? They will check your credentials. And guess what? If you're climbing the gate, you know what I mean? Instead of you going through the actual gate, what? that's trouble. Okay? It's trouble, trouble, trouble. So, I don't know where she's. The Bible says, and they watched the gates day and night to kill them. The word gates here means gates of hell, like into a big prison. It also means entrance and access into any state. They watched the gates day and night to kill him. You don't think when you go into a nation or a region, there's not a gatekeeper watching that gate day and night ready to kill you? You don't think that you don't need to be in constant. People ask me all the time, Tiff, why you pray so much? Like, what? why you be in prayer so long? Why you be, if you knew some of the places God sent me, I ain't even told y'all. I just pray, God, whoever's sensitive in the realm of the spirit, let them pick me up. Let them wake up and not go to sleep until I get to my destination. When I was in Nigeria, they, I was in, I was in village areas where they kidnap people often. Driving there with a blanket over my head. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Begging God the whole way, blind them. Don't let them see me. I woke up one, I woke up one time, they was banging on the window. I woke up, I took the blanket off, they had machetes at the door. I said, not like this, Lord. Not like this. And they had the machete because they were cutting yam and asked me if I wanted one. I was so angry about that. But there are certain places that you go to that are, there are watchmen watching day and night to kill you. So I want us to pray quickly over gates. This is quickly up here, but you're gonna perpetually pray about gates for the rest of the year. The gate of your womb, the gate of your mind. The gate, the gate of the region or nation God needs you to go into the gate of your marriage, the gate of your promotion, the gate of government, the gate of ministry. I want you to lift up your voice because the declaration over you or you're gonna rush in. And the only thing that can slow- uh, Whatever, the doctrine of a gate, we have already demonstrated and answer whatever else she's trying to uh, create over here. No guys, you know, there's, n there's nothing, there's no there there. Okay, there's no there there. He, there's no there there, okay? The scriptures create the devil is already out there seeking someone to devour, okay? The spiritual warfare is, is always waging on. So these are the things that are already clear in the scripture, okay? 
one day, according to Hebrews, it has been appointed one to live once after that you die and it's judgment. We are going to die one day. Blessed are those who, are, who die in Christ. So right now, why it is today, we need to get our affairs in order. So Tiffany can create the, the, the what? The, I don't know, the prophetess get? <laughs> the Tiffany get? <laughs> the, the whatever get she wants to put out here, we are not faced. 